heartiest greetings to all the wonderful souls on this very special occasion of Sri Krishna Janmashtami Mahotsav. It was about 5,000 years ago that the master of infinite universes, the all-pervading, descended in his personal form on our planet Earth and displayed such wonderful pastimes that endeared the minds of one and all. The father of all became the son of Nand and Yashoda. He who is without beginning or end was willing to be tied up in the rope of love of Yashoda. This wonderful dissension of the Lord, we celebrate his appearance day on our planet Earth today. What is the relevance of Sri Krishna Janmashtami celebration for all of us? We all seek love for God. It is that priceless treasure which big yogis and munis strive for all their lives. And one blessed soul becomes the recipient of it. Saint Kabir said, Kabira sab jag nirdhana Dhanavanta nahi koya Dhanavanta soi janiye Jahi prem dhan hoya He said, look, everybody in this world is penurious. The poor are definitely poor. The rich are also poor. Know that person to be wealthy who is rich in love for God. So how will we develop this wonderful wealth of para-bhakti? It will not come by itself. Sadhan bina sadhya kabhuna hi mile. We will have to cultivate it. And the basis of love is faith. Binu vishwas bhagati nahi. Those souls who are endowed with this treasure of faith are truly blessed because they can easily love the Supreme. But where will faith come from? It is one thing to have hearsay faith. Your friend told you Krishna is great and you believed. And it is another thing to have that kind of shraddha which is based on knowledge and understanding. Hence, our saints and scriptures said, do not be lazy in the acquisition of scriptural knowledge. Siddhanta baliya chitte na karo alas. This knowledge of the Lord, of his devotion, doesn't come through the intellect because our intellect is limited. It is material and finite. One little child came back from his school and said, Papa, I will not go to school again. The father said, what is the problem? Papa, yesterday the teacher was saying 4 plus 6 is equal to 10. Today he is saying 7 plus 3 is equal to 10. Now, if he is going to keep changing every day, what is the use of studying? The teacher is teaching the truth. The little child doesn't have the capacity to comprehend it. 
one herd of elephants was passing by. And a mouse saw the baby elephant and said, Jumbo, can you please step out? The baby elephant wondered who's speaking to me, came out and said to the mouse, what is it? I wanted to check if you are wearing my swimming trunks. Can the swimming trunks of the mouse fit the baby elephant? You will laugh. Similarly, the saints laugh when we say, I am so intelligent, I can understand and pass judgment on the supreme divine personality. If we wish to understand the secret of Lord Krishna's dissension, then we will need to access our scriptures. So today, we are going to delve into this secret with the help of Vedic knowledge, with the help of logic, and with the assistance of worldly real-life examples. There's a humming coming all over the place. There's a humming sound coming machine outside. The first question, does God take avatar? Can God take birth in this world? Some people say there is no question of it. There are others who say that God cannot even be formless. He cannot have any form. He is only formless. Once, when I first went for darshan of Kripaluji Maharaj, I was living in Mumbai at that time. So every day I would go, there would be kirtan going on. I would sit by his side. And another new devotee, was also coming for the first time for darshan of Gurudev, Sri Maharaj. With great enthusiasm, we would participate in the kirtan, Govinda Jai Jai, Gopala Jai Jai. Four days went by. And then, in the interval, this gentleman, he asked, Maharaj was there any Sri Krishna? Or is it just a story created by someone? Kripaluji Maharaj had a hearty laugh. He said, you know, <clears throat> for so many days you have been coming here and doing Govinda Bolo, Hari Gopala Bolo, and today you are asking, is there any Sri Krishna or not? But the fact is, this doubt exists in the minds of so many. So, let us analyze those who say God cannot take on a form. You ask them, why do you say that? They will say, look, God is everywhere. Agreed. He is all-pervading. Agreed. Supposing he takes on a form, how will he remain all-pervading? For example, if Lord Krishna is in Vrindavan, then how can he be in Dallas or in Delhi or Mumbai? This is the logic they use upon God, but they forget that God is kartum akartum anyatha kartum samarthaha. He is the possessor of innumerable contradictory attributes at the same time. He is closer than the closest, further than the furthest. He is smaller than the smallest and bigger than the biggest. He is, has senses and he can do all his works without senses. He is Srishti Karta, Akarta, Kripa Karta, and Nyai Karta, 
all at the same time. So for that God to use this logic, that he cannot be at one place in a form and also everywhere in his formless aspect, is to limit that all-powerful God. If we accept that he is Sarva Shaktiman, Sarva Drishta, Sarva Antaryami, Sarva Loka Maheshwar, the possessor of infinite powers, then we will need to accept he has the power to do whatever he wishes. That is God. Common sense. Take a look at this world. Was this world, how was it created? So, the Yajurved, Taittri Upanishad states, Tasmadva etasmadatmana akasha sambhuta akasha dvayor vayor agni agni rapaha dabhya prithvi prithivyaushadhaya aushadhi bhyonnam annat purushaha savayesh purusho narasamayaha. This Ved mantra states that first of all, God created space, the sky. And the sky is without attributes. From space, the next element that God created was the air. The air got the attribute of touch, which was not there in the sky. You can feel the breeze blowing and you say, it's a cold day, put on a wind cheater. So the father did not have this attribute of touch and the son developed it. From the air manifested fire and it got an additional attribute, that of form. Air has no form, fire does. From fire came water and water got the added quality of taste which did not exist in the fire. The Bhagavad Gita states, Rasoham apsukaunteya. Arjun, I am the taste in the water. And from the water came the next element which was the earth. It got the attribute of smell which did not exist in the water. And from the earth, the living entities were born and the whole world full of forms, shapes, colors and attributes got manifested. So how did this world come about? From the formless sky or space. Look at the astonishment. The formless got transformed into so many myriad shapes and sizes. How did this happen? You will say, Swamiji, God was controlling it. It is He who made it possible. That is exactly what I am also saying. If God has the ability to transform formless space, into this whole world, does he not have the ability to take on a form himself? Or is it that he says, you know, I don't have the energy and capacity to take a form, hence I am only formless. How can that be possible? Sansar ke kartar ka akar na hota, तो उसका यह संसार भी साकार न होता। If we accept that God is all powerful, we need to accept He has the ability and capacity to also take on a form Himself. All right. Is there any mention of the personal form of God and His avatar in the Vedas? Some people say this avatarvad is only a creation of the Puranas. 
and the Vedas have no mention of it. However, there are hundreds of Vedic mantras declaring it. Purvo yo deve bhyo jato namo ruchaya brahmaye. The Rig Veda states, even before the devatas existed, the Lord was taking avatars. Praja patis charati garbhe antarajaya manu bahudhavi jayate tasya yonim paripashyanti dhiraha. This is the Purusha Suktam of the Yajurveda. It states, Ajayamano, God doesn't have any births. Bahudha Vijayate, He has innumerable births. You say, how come both are being described? Either He takes birth or He doesn't take birth. How come the Vedas are talking about both sides? Well, <laughs> this contradiction exists for us as well. Are we formless or do we have a form? The answer to this depends upon how we define the entity I. The Ajnani would say, I am the body. The Jnani would say, I am the soul. If you look upon yourself as the body, you have a form. But if you realize I am the divine soul, then the soul has got no form. When the soul departs at the time of death, nobody can see it going. Scientists conducted experiments. One scientist did this particular experiment in Russia. He said, you know, Indian philosophers say that there is a soul that leaves the body. Let's see if it's true or not. So one who was close to death, terminally sick, they put such a person in a glass cage. When the soul departs, will this cage crack or not? Let us see. The person passed away, the soul left, and the glass box remained intact. The soul did not require any space to leave. It is formless. Eshaha anuhu atma anupramanat, the Vedas say, smaller than the smallest, so tiny. So we are the formless soul. And yet we have taken on the personal form of a man, a woman, a child, an adult. And innumerable times, in innumerable lifetimes, in fact, 8.4 million kinds of bodies, sometimes the body of a dog, a cat, a horse, we have forgotten now, but rotating in the 8.4 million species of life, we took on all these forms. So, we, tiny souls, have this capacity that although we are formless, we can manifest with a form. If we souls have this ability, then why can God not do it? Hence, the scriptures are saying, Ajayamano bahudha vijayate. God does not have any births, and yet he takes its innumerable avatars. There is a Brahma Sutra which says, Dvadasha vadhubhaya vidham vadarana yottaha. This is the Vedanta Darshan for you. Writing his commentary on it, Jagadguru Shankaracharya, he said, Yada sa shariratam sankalpayati tada sa shariro bhavati yada tva shariratam tada tva shariraha satya sankalpatvat sankalpavai chitrayacha. If that Lord resolves 
I should become formless. He becomes all-pervading. If he resolves, I should take on a form. He manifests in a form. He is both nirakar and sakar. Look, the Samaved states, Dvevava Brahmano Rupe Murtan Chaiva Murtan Cha. Now, this much of Sanskrit anybody can understand? A murt and murt. Shankaracharya himself said, Murtan Chaiva Murtan Dveva Brahmano Rupe. The Supreme Lord is both murt sakar and a murt nirakar. Shankaracharya himself was a great devotee of the personal form of God. You may be aware, he is the one who went to the four dhams in India and worshipped the Lord Sri Vigraha. His peat is existent even today. When he went to Badri Kashram and entered the temple of Badri Vishal, he expected to see the Lord Narayan. But what he saw was a little shaligram. He was confounded. I thought I would see Badri Vishal and what I am seeing is the shaligram. He asked the pundits what happened to the Lord Sri Vigraha. They said, you know, the Buddhists were attacking and destroying and to protect the Murti, we immersed it into the Alaknanda river. Shankaracharya sat down in meditation and he had an epiphany. He then came out and said, look, if I am able to recover that Murti, which you immersed and now you have lost it, will you be willing to reinstall it back into the mandir. The pandit said, definitely. So as he had received the instruction in his meditation, he walked along the river until he came to a point. And there he jumped in. He dived deep in and he found the hand of the murti. He lifted it up. But when he took it out of the water, he was astonished to see that its three fingers were broken. He said, it's a Khandit Murti, how can it be worshipped in the temple? He immersed it, took another dip, must be somewhere else. And he lifted, a Murti came out, only to discover he had brought the same Murti out again. He immersed it a second time and took a third dip. And this time when he came out, he was shell-shocked. The same Sri Vigraha was in his hands. He brought it out, but he was confused. What was the meaning of this? When there was an Akashwani, a voice from the heavens, which said, don't be disturbed. I wish to be worshipped in this very form. Get it installed. And that is when the Murti got installed in the Badrikashram, Badri Vishal Mandir. So Shankaracharya himself has offered so many praises to the personal form of God. Yamuna nikata tatasthita vrindavana kanane maharamye kalpadhrumatala bhumau charanam charano paristhapya tishthantam ghana nilam swateja sabhasa yantam iha vishvam pitaam bara paridhanam chandana karpura lipta sarvangam. Someone asked him, can you please describe your Ishtadev, the worshipable form of your Lord? And the Adi Jagadguru responded, Achyutam Keshavam Satyabham Adhavam Madhavam Sridharam Radhika Radhitam Indira Mandiram Chetasa Sundaram Devaki Nandanam Nandajam Sandade Kunchitai Kuntalai 
ಭ್ರಾಜ್ಯಮಾನಾನನಂ ರತ್ನಮೌ ಲಿಂಲಸತ್ ಕುಂಡಲಂ ಗಂಡಯು ಹಾರಕೇಯೂರಕಂ ಕಂಕಣ ಪ್ರೋಜ್ವಲಂ ಕಿಂಕಿಣಿ ಮಂಜುಲಂ ಶ್ಯಾಮಲಂ ತಂಭದೆ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಟು ಅಚ್ಯುತ್ ಟು ಕೇಶವ್ ಟು ಭಗವಾನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ so the vedas and the acharyas have so many mantras declaring the personal forms glories in the gopal tapani upanishad of the vedas a question is asked kam paramo devah kuto mrityur vibheti kasya gyane nakhalam taj gyatam bhavati three questions who is param dev from whom does even death tremble and knowing whom will we know everything that is knowable and the answer is given krishno havai paramam daivatam govindan mrityur vibheti gopi jan vallabh gyane nakhilam taj gyatam bhavati so we heard from shankaracharya and the vedas now hear from jagat guru ramanuja acharya he was the great acharya of the shri sampradaya before he became acharya he was the disciple of yadav prakash he was massaging his guru's back who was lying and reading the upanishads and translating it so there was a mantra tasya yatha kapyasam pundarika meva makshani kapi means one of the meanings is monkey so gurudev translated it that this is referring to the nates the buttocks of a monkey tasya yatha kapyasam pundarika meva makshani and hearing that the great ramanuja acharya started shedding tears those hot drops they fell on the guru's back burning him he said what is the matter why are you crying my disciple ramanuja acharya said guru what an insult to god this is not the meaning of the mantra pundari kameva makshani tasya yatha kapyasam it says that the lord's eyes are like lotus flowers that are blossomed by the sun this is the devotion of ramanuja acharya to the personal form of god and the fifth the last original jagat guru and jagat guru tam shri kripalu ji maharaj he says srishti purva hari deso chata dekhat mridu muskat ಸಗುಣ ರೂಪ ಸಾಕಾರನಿತ ವೇತ ವಿದಿತ ವಿಖ್ಯಾತ ದ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ಟೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಆಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಮೆಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಮಿತ ಮೇ ತಸ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಲುಕ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಮೈಲ್ ಇಫ್ ಈ ಡಸಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಹೌ ವಿಲ್ ಈ ಸ್ಮೈಲ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸಗುಣ್ ದ ಪರ್ಸನಲ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲಾಡ್ ನಾ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಮೂವ್ ಆನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಆನ್ ಅನ್ರಾವ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ದೀಸ್ ಸೀಕ್ರೆಟ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಿ ಅದರ್ if the lord's avatar does happen does it take place from the mother's womb is god born like an ordinary child is born with rajavirya or does he jump from the outside like for example we all know that lord krishna he took birth from vasudev and devaki in the karagriha the prison house of kans in mathura so did he manifest from devaki's womb like a worldly child would or did he jump into the prison house from the window because the bhagavatam states avirasi yatha pratyam dishindu riva pushkalah the lord manifested like the moon manifests in the 16 kalas into the sky the full moon so if he manifested 
It must have been from the outside. Don't say manifested, Swamiji. Say took birth. He took janma. See, we celebrate Janmashtami. And Sri Krishna himself says, Bahuni me vyatitani janmani tavacharjana arjuna. I have taken so many jan. So if the Lord takes jan or birth, the Gita says, Jatasya hi dhruva mrityur dhruvam janma mritasya cha. One who takes birth also has to die. And the one who dies again takes birth. So if God is taking birth and then dying, and then taking birth and then dying, then what is the difference between us and him? He's like our elder brother. We used to offer respect, but now we know he's also caught in the cycle of life and death. No, there is a huge difference between the birth of the Lord and our birth. And this is revealed in the 11th verse of the 4th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Janma karma cha me divyam evam yo veti tattvataha tyaktva deham punar janma naiti mameti sorjuna Arjun, I have a divine birth. Let there be no confusion. Your birth is material. And your works are also material. My birth is divine. And my works are also divine. So the Lord has a divine birth. And that divine birth is not from the mother's womb. Why not, Swamiji? Look, the Bhagavatam itself says, Tatascha shaurir bhagavat prachodita sutan samadaya cha sutika grihat. Tamad bhutam balakamam mujekshanam chatur bhujam shanka gadha yudhayudham. When the Lord manifested, it was not like a little baby. It was in his six foot four armed Vishnu form holding the shanka chakra gada and padma. So he manifested before Vasudeva and Devaki like this. And Devaki realized, he is not my child. Let me not be confused. In fact, she offered praises, stutis. Rupam yattat prahuravyaktam adhyam brahma jyotir nirgunam nirvikaram sattamatram nirvishesham niriyam sattvam sakshad vishnu radhyatma deepa. She said, my lord, that Bhagavan who is famous in the three worlds as Vishnu and who is all pervading, you are that Vishnu. You are not my child. I know why you have come. In my previous life, I had asked you for a boon. Please allow me to be your mother. But my Lord, why are you robbing me of this opportunity? You have come in this form that I will see you as my father. How will I experience that maternal affection to you? And Vasudev also praised the Lord. Vidito si bhavan sakshat purusha prakrite para kevala nubhavananda swarupo sarva buddhidrik. Maharaj, I have no doubts. You are the inspirer of our senses, mind and intellect. Everything we do is by virtue of the power we receive from you. But then, Devaki pleaded. Opasangara vishvatman nado rupamalaukikam. O Lord, please hide this form. Because I wish to feel that I am your mother. You see, in the Ramavatar, Kaushalya also pleaded in the same manner, Kije Shishulila. When the Lord manifested by Prakat Kripala, Bhushanavanamala, Nij Ayud Bhujachari, so she said, Kije Shishulila, please start your childhood pastimes.
So then the Lord used his yoga maya. This yoga maya is his divine power. With the help of that, he makes the devotee forget what he has seen. And he puts it on himself as well. So even the Lord forgets. He doesn't remember all the time I am God, but I am acting. Otherwise he will experience no bliss. Now the soul and God both come under the curtain of yoga maya. And then the leela begins. So this is the divine birth of the Lord, which is not happening from the stomach. But the world is thinking, the Lord is born like a little child. Even Devaki has forgotten that I had said, please start your childhood pastimes. Because if Devaki remembers, how can she ever think I am his mother? Every time she sees Krishna, she will fold her hands and start the Vishnu Sahasranam. Shanta Karam Bhujangashayam Nam Padmanabham Suresham. So by the Yoga Maya, Bhakt and Bhagavan both forget that originality and then the Leela begins. We have understood the divine birth of God. Now let's move on. His body is also divine. What is the nature of that divine body? It is such that it cannot be explained. Anirvachaniyam. Why can it not be explained, Swamiji? Because we don't have an experience of the divine. So simple. Supposing a worm of the neem tree comes and asks you, Sir, uh, what is your favorite dish? And you say, Rasgulla, of course. And that Neem Ka Kira says, Can you please describe this Rasgulla to me? How sweet it is. Now what will you say? Oh, worm of the Neem tree. Have you ever tasted sugar? No, sir. Have you tasted good jaggery? No, sir. Have you tasted Mishri sugar candy? Uh, no, sir. Have you tasted any sweet thing? Sir, I was born on the neem tree. All I ate throughout my life was those bitter neem leaves. So what will you say now? Oh, neem ke kide, if you have never tasted anything sweet in your life, how will I ever explain to you how is this Raskulla? If you had even eaten good, I would have said it's ten times sweeter. But in your lack of experience, there is no way I can communicate the sweetness of the Raskulla to you. Similarly, we souls, since endless lifetimes, we have only experienced the realm of Maya. And God is Omaic, beyond, He is divine. Now how will saints communicate His divinity to us? They do make some humble attempts. Like the color of the Lord, Ghanasham is a name for Krishna. What is His complexion? Like that of a rain-bearing cloud. Or the Ramayan says, Neela Saro Ruha Neela Mani. Like that Neel Kamal, the blue lotus. Now you say God's color is like a blue lotus. <laughs> but we see so many blue lotuses. When we go out on the lake, they are growing. We don't, after seeing it, go into Samadhi. And we hear God is so attractive that anybody who would see him, Janak saw him and lost his senses. He was drowned in divine love. If God's color is like a blue lotus, then what's the big deal? Well, factually, we may say Krishna is Ghansham, but Krishna's color is not like the rain-bearing cloud, not like the blue lotus, like nothing in this world. Because everything in the world is mayik made from maya.
and mayik objects cannot have the glorious wondrous attributes that god has so how will you explain the color of the lord's body either the saints remain quiet but if they do that we will have no basis to do our bhakti so to give us some kind of prop construct they tell us look the color of god is like this like this that's not exactly his color that is only a helper for us to visualize and conceive of him so what is his body actually like then swami ji his body is sat chit anand it is a body made of anand bliss now can you imagine a body made of bliss difficult to think of by our material intellect the bliss in the lord's form is such right now we don't have experience of it we say guru ji please give me darshan of god guru ji says first you make yourself eligible for it in the present state if any guru gave us darshan of god in free fund and we saw his form and experienced that divine bliss we would not be able to tolerate it our whole body would incinerate such is the temperature <coughs> of the bliss of the lord we people have limited capacity for tolerating pay tolerating pain and pleasure so when pleasure goes beyond a certain limit we faint similarly when pain increases beyond limits we faint we cannot even tolerate the bliss of the celestial abodes these devatas if they come here they don't in the age of kali we have stopped worshiping them so they also don't come but if a devta was to come and we were to smell the aroma emanating from the devata's body we would faint unconscious ah such pleasure then the bliss of god is bhuma sukhyo vai bhuma tat sukham there was one poor husband and wife they had five daughters whom they needed to get married and their poverty was had was like a miserable noose around their neck the husband purchased a lottery ticket the day the draw was to come out he had gone to the office the wife checked and said oh we have won the 16 million dollar first prize now she was thrilled about the prize but then worried that my husband is a heart patient he's got a weak heart if he comes to know that we have got 16 million dollars i hope he doesn't have a heart attack so she went and approached the her husband's doctor the cardiologist and said uh, mr doctor i have a problem here it's a good problem to have we have won the first prize of 16 million dollars but what i have fear is that when my husband comes to know he should not have a cardiac arrest doctor said don't you worry i am a specialist i will come home and break this news to your husband in the evening when he returns from office so the husband returned and the doctor also arrived doctor said kyon bhai suppose you were to win a prize of 200000 dollars what would you do the man started daydreaming i would clear off my mortgage and suppose you were to win a prize of 1 million dollars he said then i would invest a little in one home i would get two of my daughters married now he kept on increasing if you were to win a prize of 8 million dollars 
and finally he said what if you were to win a prize of 16 million dollars you're softening the blow and increasing it gradually this man said look why talk of hypothetical cases I am not such a lucky guy to win such a jackpot but I tell you since you are asking me if ever I win that prize I will give half of it to you <laughs> hearing that the doctor had a heart attack <laughs> see our hearts have a limited capacity for tolerating pleasure and pain and the bliss of God is infinitely beyond that limit so when we say Guruji Bhagavan ke darshan karado, Guruji says first do sadhana and prepare yourself for it. So the body of God is divine, Satchid Anand, but there is great jokery in it. It doesn't have the hard mass Jatharagni in our body. The Lord doesn't need to eat and sleep. But he hides his originality and performs leelas. And by virtue of yoga maya, when we see the body, we see it on the basis of our spiritual elevation. Jaki rahi bhavana jaisi, prabhu murati dekhi tenataisi. So the birth of God is divine. His form is also divine. And all the different lords are one. Some people ask, is Krishna big and is Ram small? Or is Shiv big and is Krishna small? Someone says, Krishna nam sakalate adhika. Other says, Ram nam sakalate adhika. Is this a fact? There is one Purna avatar, Paravastha avatar, Avesh avatar, Leela avatar, Manvantar avatar. So is there a big God, a little smaller God and an even smaller God? There is one Sampraday which says that Krishna is 100% Bhagavan and Narayan is 93% Bhagavan and Shankar he is only 87% Bhagavan. Now tell me thank God you didn't say 87.3421 but where did you get these numbers from? Can you have percentages of God? As far as we know, he is Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamudachyate, Purnasya, Purnamadaya, Purnameva Vashishyate. God is so perfect and complete. If you take something out from him, that will be perfect and complete. And what will remain will also be infinite. See, the mathematics of infinite is different from finite. 5 minus 5 is 0. Infinity minus 5 is infinite. Infinity, from that you take out infinite. What do you have left? You still have infinite. So infinity plus infinity is infinity. Infinity minus infinity is also infinity. That is the nature of God. So these avatars, these various forms, they are all perfect and complete this statement is given by the avatar Vedavyas himself in the Padma Puran. Sarve Purna Shashvatascha Dehastasya Paratmanaha. Look, it is so simple. In whichever avatar, whatever Leela's God wishes to do, he manifests those many Shaktis. All the Shaktis are there in all the avatars. But they are manifested as per need. We people do the same. When you work in your office, you are manifesting your complete competence. Especially when you talk with your boss. And when it comes to chatting with your colleagues, you are a little off guard. And when it's with the subordinates, you are totally casual. And you come home, you put on a dhoti and speak with your child. Ka veta, kya hal 
Now you are speaking in childish gibberish, totally bhasha. At that time, if somebody comes, is this the gentleman you were saying? C uh, CTO, Chief Technical Officer, so competent, this is how he speaks. Kao beta, tela kya hal tal hai? Look, this is not the complete competence of the CTO that is manifesting here. If you wish to see how erudite he is, go and observe him when he is sitting in his office. Similarly, the Lord too manifests as many shaktis as is required. Now I have Dara Singh, world champion wrestler of yesteryears. If he was going for his nitya karma into the fields, do you think he would take one drum of water? Whatever was required, he would take it. Supposing you need to kill a mosquito, will you take a double barrel gun? In the same way, the Lord too is possessor of infinite shaktis in each of his forms. Sarve sarva gunai purna. The Varaha Puran and all the other Purans are stating the same thing. So Ram, Krishna, they are both one. So is Shiv. Ultimately, there is one God, Ek Mevad Dvitiyam Brahma, Ekam Sat Vipra Bahudha Vadanti, Ekam Santam Bahudha Kalpayanti, Ekohi Rudro Na Dvitiyayatasthur. There is a Leela. Once, Mother Yashoda, she was putting her Lala, Gopal Krishna, to sleep. And she was telling him a lullaby to make him doze off. So she said, Ramo Nama Babhu Vaham. So as she was relating, Krishna would listen and do whom? Ramo Nama Babhu Tadabala Siteti. You know, his wife was Sita. Tam Pitur Vacha Panchavati Vane Nivasitas. And on the instruction of their father, they went and they were residing in Panchavati. Tasya Haradravana. One Rakshas Ravan came and kidnapped Sita. Now Krishna who was gliding into sleep, <coughs> hearing that Katha. When he heard that Ravan kidnapped Sita, Krishna Syaiva Purata Neem Nijakatha Makar Nematre Ritam Saumitre Kwa Dhanur Dhanur Dhanurite Vyagra Agra Pantuna Krishna got up. Little toddler on his legs. Hasite, Hasite, Lakshman, where is my bow? Bring it for me. Yashoda said, What in the world is going on out here? I was telling him Ram Katha and he is shouting Hasite, Hasite. Yashoda did not know he is the same Ram who experienced the viraha of Sita. Remembering the story, memories of it have come back. That is why he is screaming like this. So it was the same Ram who descended as Krishna and Lakshman descended as Balaram. Because when Lakshman used to do Charan Seva of Ram, at midnight Ram would say, go to sleep. Lakshman would say, I want to serve more. Ram would say, I am the elder brother, listen to me. So Lakshman said, okay, next time I will be the elder brother. You will have to listen to me. This time he came as Balaram. Jambavant also came. Hanuman also descended and he sat on the pataka of Arjun's chariot during the Mahabharata. Even Surpanaka came as Kubja. So all these who descended again, it means that Ram and Krishna are one. In the Garg Samhita, there is a story that when Lord Ram was moving around in the forest of Dandakaryatnya. He met these great rishis and ascetics. 
who had been practicing austerities for ages to achieve God realization. And when God finally came as Ram, they looked on him and they were enchanted. <gasps> you are so beautiful. We like to worship you in Gopi Bhav. Ram said, I am Maryada Purushottam. It's not possible. I will come again as Krishna. You all come as gopis. Pura Maharshaya Sarve Dandaka Ranyavasinaha Drishtva Rama Maharim Tatra Bhoktu Mitchan Suvigram Te Sarve Streetva Mapanna Samud Bhutasya Gokule Hari Samprapya Kamena Tato Mukta Bhavar Navat. So those rishis and munis, they came as gopis and worshipped the same Lord as their beloved. So it is one God, Ekameva Dvitiyam, because God is He who has manifested the world. There is one creator. But when it comes to the question of whom will we choose as our Ishtadev, the chosen form that we worship, we will have to select one. If you try to attach your mind to five forms, Panchadeva Pasana, you will discover you can't love even one. Ek sadhe, sab sadhe, sab sadhe, sab jai. You choose one and keep on loving that form, you will develop love for all the forms of God. So although they are all the same, we need to select an Ishtadev. And from that point of view, if we select the form of God which is extremely attractive, then our mind naturally gets endeared to it. Devotion becomes a breeze. From that point of view, worship of Lord Krishna is very advantageous. That Murli Manohar, Kama Vimbohan, Madan Mohan, he attracts the minds of everybody in the world. Plus, his Leelas are also so loving. Hearing those Leelas, the heart melts. And in those leelas, he displayed how he is enslaved by love. He dances to the tune of the gopis. And he is willing to finish his almightiness and subjugate himself to Yashoda. So there are many, many advantages and tremendous bliss in the worship of Krishna. But if we wish to develop love for him, we must understand his divine personality, entity, and the secret of his rahasya. So today, we comprehended that his birth is divine and his form is divine. Now, his leelas are also divine. But why does he descend at all? These questions... We will discuss in tomorrow's discourse. Bolye Shri Krishna Chandra Bhagwan Ki Jai. Jagat Guru Shri Kripalu Ji Maharaj Ki Shri Radha Krishna Temple of Dallas Ki Jai Jai Shri Radhe Jai Jai Shri Radhe Jai Jai Shri Radhe There is an external world made from earth, water, fire, air and sky. And there is an inner world within us, our thoughts, values, beliefs, ideas, attitudes. As we progress in this mind management challenge, we are embarking on a journey within ourselves. We are discovering tools and techniques to adorn 
to ornament ourselves from within.